Hello guys, the DB Grinder here, back at it again with another video, and this time we have the YCS LA 2023 Finals, the 250th YCS. Um, this was one of the biggest YCSs ever in the US. I don't know if it was the biggest, but I, was, I think I had like 3,000 some players. Um, but we're going to see Pauly ver playing Cash Tira versus Jesse Flores on the Cheery of Runic. So... Pauly is a YCS champion. He won a YCS about a year ago. Um, I don't know if Jesse's a YCS champion, but I have seen him. Like, I have seen his name around a bunch. So, it wouldn't surprise me if he is. Um, they're going to go ahead and special summon out Fenrir now. They have Terraforming, Book of Moon, Birth, Theosis, it looks like in hand. Yeah, so special out Fenrir. And then they're going to go Fenrir effect to search. All right. Um, see traps there, imperms it looks like. Yeah, just traps in the deck. Nothing too big. Also, the thing is, one thing, um, these players might start fatiguing. Um, because it is in the time zone that's Pauly's from. It's 1.26 a.m. And then, pretty sure they said Jesse's four eyes is from Texas, which I think is an hour ahead, so it'd be like, uh, midnight there right now, but they're gonna go Theosis, target Fenrir to go special summon out now. This is Cash Tier versus Nachiri of Runic. We have had uh, Sprite Melfi win the London YCS. Um, the Bogota YCS was won by Cash Tira, and now let's see, does Cash Tira win another YCS or does Nachiri of Runic even it out for three different decks winning a YC like winning the YCS throughout the weekend? Which is kinda crazy. Three different decks winning. Special summon Cash Tira Rise Heart, use Unicorn, use Fenrir, Overlay, uh, summon out Shangri La. Nobody plays Nib. Um, full force into it. They also have Yeah, they have pressured planet up to What's their hand exactly? Birth? Terraforming? The Terraforming is just dead until next turn. It is follow-up, though. So they're going to detach Fenrir, special summon Fenrir. Um, pressured planet, pop Shangri-La, protect it. Yeah. Even though we're not going for the, the lock combo, um, we can summon a Rise Heart on top of Rise Heart. And then we can go birth, birth summon out unicorn, and then we could use those for mine hacker if we want to. And that puts a lot of materials under our rise heart for us. Then next we're gonna go activate birth, birth effect, summon out unicorn. Okay, overlay those now. And then go for mind hacker. And then mind hacker effect. Um they're going to rip. Let's see what's in their extra deck. I mean, it's just pretty standard. Most people hit Exceton Knight in this spot. They're thinking about what they want to hit, though. Um, A Synchro 10 isn't bad. A Synchro... The thing is about the Synchro 10 and Synchro 6, yeah, they're just going to hit Exceton Knight. Unless if you're setting up Unicorn, it's really not worth hitting a Synchro 6. But if you hit a Synchro 6, and then you have Unicorn on the field to hit the other Synchro 6, that's pretty good. Uh, so then they're going to get Mind Attacker to make them banish, Shangri-La to lock a zone, and a Rise Heart Effect to attach. And then, new Chain Link, um, a Rise Heart Effect to attach, Shangri-La Effect to lock a zone. So then they are going to lock another monster zone, the three monsters. This is like the classic Cash Tira combo. They have Book of Moon also to protect this. Uh, they have Birth for follow-up. The opponent knows about it. It was searched off Unicorn. Uh, they could go Terraforming Search for Field Spell just to get another material under a Rise Heart here. And they are going to do that. Okay, that's going to allow them. So the reason why this is so big is because now they're going to have a fourth material on a Rise Heart. So if they use a Rise Heart effect, they can detach and they can keep the Fenrir underneath the Arise Heart, so a Big Bang can use its effect to summon out the Fenrir. So that is good. And then they're going to pass. Um, then Standby Phase. They can get the Shangri-La effect to go summon. They know it's not a mirror match, there's no punish. 
Also, Pressure Plant up being a pop at any point is pretty good. A Rise Heart's there. If a Rise Heart leaves, Bertha's there. They're checking out they banish the right amount of cards face down before they draw. Pa By the way, Polly is like literally the nicest Yu-Gi-Oh player ever. Um, this man has literally appealed game losses that his opponents were going to get. He was like, no, I appeal that game loss. I don't want to win that way. Um, Polly is really nice. So when he's checking there, he, he's probably checking for the opponent's sake and not for like, a, ooh, I hope they draw this card and then I hope they banish the wrong amount and get a game loss. So they bring out Fenrir during the standby phase off of Shangri-La. Um, okay, that's fine. They just want to summon Fenrir early. Could have gone for Unicorn since Fenrir can be summoned off a of Rise Heart. Hidden accepts on that, I think, is just the play anyways. That card's nice. It, it's just like one of the, like, it, it's like the blowout. You don't want to get blown out by it. It's like hitting Zeus if it's a one of. They're going to drop Gamma Seal on the Arise Heart. And this is also another reason to bring out Fenrir. Okay, so out the Arise Heart, that's a pretty good start. But what about after that? I see runic spells with runic fountain in hand. Flashing fire. It looks like dispelling fountain. But the runic spells aren't that great. While wow, there's birth on field. So activate fountain. Sure. Also the book of moon is going to be pretty good too. To be able to hit Nocheria stuff. Someone in chat said are you trying to pretend that Diablos or Shangri-La are interruptions? Ah, see, Shangri-La actually is an interruption, because it, once they get Fenrir or Birth Effect to resolve, um, they can go Pressured Planet to pop because of Shangri-La effect. And also, um, being able to block more monster zones would be really good. So, activate tip, tip go search. Oh, we see Karkura in their deck. That yeah, card is nice against cash. It's pretty not great against everything else, but it's pretty good against cash. Hit a rise heart right there off of the tip. And then they're going to cut their deck. Just takes the top two cards of their deck, puts it to the bottom. I respect it. Oh, wait. What did they even grab? Hold on. I didn't even... Was it Destruction? They probably did those Destruction because they have to Outburst. They have to out birth, otherwise birth is going to out them. Activate destruction to pop. Technically don't have to target birth. How many cards do they have in the graveyard right now? Because I'm pretty sure this is going to be the second card. And because of that, they wouldn't even be able to get hit with birth because they wouldn't have three. Okay, but now if they flash and fire to pop, now they'll have three. So, I think they said target Fenrir there. Yup. Drawing just tons of good runic spells. These cards are crazy. Activate Slumber? Why are we building this huge chain link? Okay. I mean, it's fine, right? Now we're going to have a chain block fountain for three. Flashing, pyre, flashing fire, pop Fenrir. Uh, banish two, hit Theosis, hit Theosis, destruction, pop birth, hit Theosis, hit Theosis, hit Theosis, hit Theosis. No Theosis, had three prosperity and desires. Unfortunate. Also, they just put their banished on top of their banished, yeah. <laughs> Little accident. Oopa, oops. <laughs> That's funny. It's probably weird having the banishes above the graveyard like that. But now they can go... Fountain 1. They're thinking about using Hugin, but they didn't even check their banish. What if the other fountain's there and they can't chain block now? They're going to look kind of dumb. Okay, they can chain block. Good thing the last set is not Imperm. Actually, Imperm wouldn't do anything. Never mind. Imperm would be decent. But Book of Moon is good. It's still solid. Yeah, in, in person, I'll do it. You need Cosmic. Cosmic would be it. 
So grab fountain and then put back three to draw three. It's so hard to beat runic when they draw like that. Like five runic spells plus gamma seal. That literally is just going to break so many boards. And then if the fountain draws into Nechiria engine, like, it's just going to feel like cheating. But they also need to draw more runic spells too. So they still have to get lucky at this point, because Kashtira is such a solid deck. They have Birth for follow-up, they still have a field, um, and you have to actually out some of the cards. Like, you have to out Shanger Law, otherwise Shanger Law summons during the standby phase, gives them more follow-up, more bodies, pressured planet to pop, out something. They're going to go Foolish Burial Goods, that gets access to Sacred Tree, Sacred Tree can go search for an Echiria, then that can grab Mole Cricket. And then, yo. Okay. And then Mole Cricket's pretty good. Uh normal summon. Okay. Uh effect tribute to go summon out two. Now what do they bring out? This could actually change the entire game of what they bring out. Because they have Book of Moon. Summon Camilla, summon Camilla. Camilla, effect to dump. To dump Sacred Tree. Now the thing is... Is Sacred Tree effect to go search? That's so tough. Because you can't book... If you book a moon Hugin, they can still play. If you book a moon Camilla, they have another Camilla to keep playing anyways. So, um, yeah, that sucks. That's rough. They weren't even able to, like, mind hacker the opponent. Like, a single mind hacker would have done so much. It would have hit a sacred tree or something, but they never got to do it because they got hit with Gamma Seal. But the past is in the past. They're going to book a moon, target Hugin, and they're doing that before Nechiria Blessing gets added to hand, so that way they can't try to quick synchro with Blessing. A lot of people forget about that effect. It's a very good effect. When it comes up, it comes up. They also gave him an hour and five minutes for the final, so time really won't come up this time. So uh, Sacred Tree resolves now, and then grab Nechiria Blessing. Okay. So, they have Dugaris, Babuska, that kind of stuff in the extra deck, but you're not going to go for Babuska, because Babuska is going to get hit with a Fur Hire Link pop. So, you can go Dugaris, draw a discard, try to get to more runic things. It still just looks like Cash Tiro wins this game. Except on Knight got banished. So they can't try to do anything like that. Even though I'm pretty sure the Runic player is up in cards. So they wouldn't be able to work anyways. Okay, they're going to, um... Thank you. They have Dugaris. They have Nechiria Blessing. Is it Dugaris? Yeah. It is. Dugaris. Unless they have some hidden spice in their extra deck. Overlay now. Go summon. Yeah, summon Dugaris. It's not Babuska. Unless. Unless if we have something that beats the Fur Hire Link. If we have, like, a flashing fire to beat it, that'd be pretty good. Oh, they do. That's why they're thinking so hard. Yup, 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 yup. That's why they're thinking. That's why they're thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're going to go for Babuska. I'm actually certain on it now. If they have to think this long, it's because they have the protection spell, and they're going to summon it. It's so strong here. 
Everything goes to the funds. Yep, there's Nacheria Blessing. There's Storm. What is that? Is that Fountain? Oh. They don't have what it takes to protect this. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Pass. Draw phase. Or I guess not on draw phase. I was going to say draw phase, activate storm to make him banish. So that way you can uh, banish more cards. But. It's like, whatever. Banishing more cards is decent. It's not crazy, though. So. They're activating Shing. Oh, wait. They actually did need to do it during draw phase. Oh, that's tough. Because they can still just activate Shangri-La effect and then standby phase. Because Shangri-La activated pressure planet pop. I don't think they thought about that. Yeah. Like I said, it's late for the players. They're going to start making mistakes. The YCS ran so late. Activate Storm to try to make him banish. Uh, could do up to four. Decides to go for four. Okay. Doesn't hit the Osis. Standard. And then Fountain Effect put back. Okay, so... Oh, this was before the opponent went Shangri-La Pressure Planet. So let's find out. What do they draw? They actually need to draw a lot here. They need to draw multiple cards, not even just one. They need to be able to out the Pressure Planet slash Shangri-La. And... Oh, there's destruction. And they need to be able to stop the fur hireling. So they drew the out to the field spell. So pop that, make them banish. Make them banish four. Birth, Econ, Deosis, Ash. Wow. Deosis add back. I mean it was bound to happen, right? It was bound to happen. They made them they made them banish eight this turn. So They're going to go ahead and Deosis add. Huh. What do they want? What do they have in their grave? It's like two birth. No no Theosis in grave. Okay, they're going to grab Unicorn. I was going to say, if Theosis was in grave, you could grab like Tier Limit Cash Tier. That'd be pretty good. Oh, they drew Theosis return. Okay, and then, standby phase, Shangri-La effect, try to go ahead and summon, it's negated from Babuska, but that's fine, because now it's effectively activated, so now we can go a Rise Heart at any point throughout this turn, um, wait, is that Econ? Oh. My. God. Wait, we could've, before using Shangri-La, we could've activated Econ to switch Babuska to attack. That's so crazy. Tribute Gamma Seal to take Babuska. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. Econ broken. Econ's been putting in work. Grab that. We saw like during the top four Econ get activated too. Switch Babuska to attack now. Alright. Um could mind hacker right now and honestly just like make them rip nine cards from their main deck maybe that'll hit the engine a little bit and hurt them try to hit material stuff grab or activate pressured planet go surge uh pressured planet's gonna grab out they have scare call catch tira catch tira ogre Alright, they're going to grab the Scareclaw Cash Tira here. Yeah. Oh? No? Okay. Yeah, grabs it. So they have Nachiria Blessing set. That can go ahead and summon back out. I really don't know why we didn't Econ before Shangri-La. I guess it makes sense to activate Pressured Planet and then Mind Hacker. Um, this is going to make it so that way Shangri-La gets a pop off Pressured Planet. 
That's tough. And they can't stop it. They can't Hugan. It's Book of Moon. Book on Hugan so crazy. Let's go, Polly. Game one is in the bag. All right, they're gonna banish. Um, looks like they're gonna banish Hugan. Yeah, just go ahead and get rid of that. Okay. Hugan doesn't really do anything anymore at this point, but it's fine. We're gonna lock a monster zone, banish that face down. Mind Tacker try to banish from their deck. Then, yeah, they're going to count their face down. Should be nine. Four off Mind Hacker, three off Rise Heart, two off Mind Hacker again from the extra deck. And then, okay, banish nine there. Yup. Add that to the pile of banished cards. Pressured Planet effect to pop. Or Shangri La effect. Yeah. So they're gonna get both. Pressured Planet Chain Link 1. I couldn't tell what they targeted. And then Chain Link 2 Shangri La lock the last monster zone. Oh, they still choose known target. If you choose Materia Blessing, then they chain it. So the thing is, is they summon to the zone, and the zone is still locked even though it's summoned. So when the monster leaves, the zone is still locked. Unless if they ruled it differently for this event. Summon out Nachiria Mole Cricket. Okay. I feel like I'm probably just popping Fountain there anyways, right? Instead of Nachiria Blessing. Because they're going to have to chain it anyhow if they want to use it. So you should just pop Fountain. Activate Birth. And then. Let's see, okay. Normal summon. Oh, oh, thinking. Yeah, no mistakes need to be made right now. We can spend plenty of time thinking through our plays. Our opponent spent plenty of time thinking through their plays. We can spend plenty of time thinking through ours. Birth, summon Fenrir. And then activate Fenrir effect to search. Okay, yeah, they're looking through everything. Double, triple checking. Do they have a runic spell? Okay, Fenrir goes through, go search. Oh, they have Ogre, Unicorn, Fenrir. Yeah, those three in deck. So they're going to grab Fenrir. There is a world where Polly loses this to deck out somehow. Okay, cut their deck, hand it back to them. Okay, confused on what they're asking there. Just making sure that was done right. And then... They still have so much. I don't think they want to play in the nib, though. Yeah, I don't think they want to play into nib. Switch Mind Hacker to attack position. Okay. They've only summoned once, though. It's not like they've summoned a bunch. They've literally only summoned Fenrir so far. So now they're going to go normal summon Unicorn. Unicorn effect, go grab Theosis. Yeah, grab the Theosis out from the deck. That's good. Um, what are they summoning? A Rise Heart, okay. Yep, go for a Rise Heart, Shangri Law is activated, let's affect this turn twice. And then summon Scareclaw Catch Tira by banishing. It's a lot of pressure. We'll have a Rise Heart effect to banish too, so they won't even be able to like Runic Spell block a body. They'll have to have two runic spells to block. Yeah, summon by banishing. Because we can go battle phase. Actually, how much damage is this exactly? 
A rise hard effect to attach. Because I'm thinking, like, Fenrir attack. Is there a world where we can banish Fountain? We can switch Shangri-La to attack. Shangri-La can beat over Mole Cricket. So then we can Shangri-La beat over Mole Cricket. Fenrir banish Fountain. Fenrir beat over the set. Attack per game with the rest of the monsters. Yeah, it's game. Let's see if they do that, though. The Shangri-La to attack position is devious. They may not see the line. Because it's getting attacked from Pressured Planet. Okay, Battle Phase. They don't switch it to attack. Okay. Um. They can still go for it, though. They can still go Fenrir, Banish Fountain, Beat Over Mole Cricket, or Beat Over whatever, and then Babuska, Beat Over the Hugin and still go for game. But they're gonna freezing curses now. Targeting Scareclaw Cash Tira. Okay. Yeah, freezing. But if you target Scareclaw Cash Tira, then a Rise Heart has three materials and it can banish face down and they win anyways. It's like a lose lose. Oh, yes, yeah, so they lose no matter what. That's pretty much it. Hits Cash Tira Ogre there off freezing. Oh, they get banished because of a Rise Heart. Unless they targeted a Rise Heart. Okay, they did. Fenrir banishes Fountain face down. Yup. Okay. And then after this, they're looking through their graveyard. They'll see the line. So the Fenrir attack goes through. But I guess they can get Shangri-La, Birth, banish from their graveyard face down, lock a spell in trap zone. Yeah, banish the runic spells. And I guess just banish Nishiria Blessing. Oh, never mind. It's Gamma Seal. Sure. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. But I would definitely put back, like, Nichiria Blessing in case. If they do somehow, like, play one Ishizu Shuffler or something. Lock more zones. Attack over Mole Cricket. And then... They can go Babuska. Attack over the set monster. Hugin effect put itself back to the extra deck. And then Mind Tacker, Arise Heart, Scareclaw, Cash Tira is game. Yep, that's game. Attack. Attack. I don't know why they're doing the math. I mean, come on now. Even without the gang attack from Pressured Planet, it's still game. They didn't Prosperity this turn. Okay, cool. So, they scoop. Moving on into the next game. Polly wins game one. Even after getting hit with like all the runic cards and the Cheerio stuff, it just doesn't matter. Cash Tira is so strong. Its follow-up is crazy, especially when you're playing runic cards and you can't out the bodies. Polly, stop being so nice. Stop talking to your opponent. I know you're being nice right now. Be mean. Be ruthless. Nah, I'm playing. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Actually, nah, you gotta. 30 minute game one. But it was a good game one. There was only three turns, also. So, on to the next one, side deck wise. Um, we'll probably see Gamma. Yeah, Gamma. Maybe Cosmic. Cosmic's also weird. Oh, the shifter is going in for sure. Yeah, they don't even side cosmic in, which makes sense. The thing is, because in theory, cosmic is one of the best cards against runic Nacheria, but in practice, nat beast, fluor, really just nat beast. That that's the one that like really hurts. One for one trading with fluor is fine, but you can't you can't one for one trade with nat beast. It's just all bad trades. Okay, and then at the same time, Jesse Flores can put in uh, Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. So, that will be a decent floodgate going up into this matchup. They can side out, like, the, the Kaiju that they play on their main deck. They even lose. Take those cards out. Try to put other cards in that'll be more useful. Oh, 
That's the head judge? The head judge is, like, built different. It looks like he was towering over everybody with a big beard. That's crazy. <laughs> respect. I respect it. I respect it. Okay, okay. I can open up the the chat now. Head judge looks like judgment in real life. I don't know what that is. Siding in five minutes. Let's start the duel. Siding is not taking five minutes. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna say, Polly, Polly, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. There we go. I gotta do what I gotta do. Oh, look at right under me, pack. Jesse playing the best deck in room. Um, it's it's a really good deck. Rinnick Nacheria is really good. He just made a couple of misplays. Or else he won this game 100%. I wonder what the misplays were. Because I'm not sure what they could have done differently. Seems like they used all the runic spells to summon. It seems like all that was like okay. Seems like the Nacheria stuff was fine. They got hit with Book of Moon though, which hurt. Yeah. But okay. But also, like they said, it's nerves and fatigue. Fatigue is the big one right now. Yeah, fatigue huge right now. Alright, though. We're going to be moving on to the next game. I'll move it back to this. Also, I saw someone in the chat say, I would just leave if third, fourth playoff started at like 11 p.m. It's like, ah, no, you wouldn't. That's just throwing away a $1,000 opportunity. But, all right, we're going to see the little animation in three, two, one. Well, that's not it. Hey, look, it's Sean Pittman. Hi. Hi, Shooping. Hi, Sean. How much you want to bet he's getting a deck profile for their team channel right now? <laughs> I almost guarantee it. I almost guarantee they are. All right. Yeah, see? It's just over everyone. Maybe he has, like, a bigger chair. Maybe he's just literally, like, six foot eight. But okay, okay, okay. On to the next game now. Enough of that. Blank. Oh, okay, we got Dark Ruler, Talons, Prosperity, Fenrir, Unicorn. No, Scarecrow Catch Jiro. Okay. You can't complain about that. You got Dark Ruler. You got Talons. Hmm. Activate Runic Tip. Runic Tip Go Search. Um, they're going to go ahead, grab Fountain, make him banish Pot of Prosperity. Okay, grabs Fountain. Activate Runic Fountain now. And then activate Storm to go summon. Yeah, can't, you can't use the other effect, so it has to use the summon effect. Uh, the opponent has no cards. Bring out Hugin. Then we can go ahead and go Hugin Fountain or Fountain Hugin. Depending on how we want to do it. We could try to draw three. Oh, discard talents. Okay, so it's definitely Fountain One, Hugin two. Discards the pretty talents. The Starlight Rare. So we're gonna search. Go ahead, grab out Fountain from the decks of the hand. And then Fountain put back, draw two. Alright, let's find out. What do we draw? What do we draw? What do we draw? They've literally had the Cheerio cards every single game. I'm confident that um, they're going to... Wait, they got to put back the cards. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter because they go to the bottom of the deck, so it's not going to change the draws. But true, they do have to put back in order to draw. Draw two. Come on, Nacheria. Mole Cricket, Camela. Mole Cricket, Camela. Summon Camela. Camela effect go dump. Holy, that's crazy. Okay, go dump. Dump Mole Cricket. Then they have um, Blessing, so they can go Nacheria Blessing, summon out Mole Cricket. 
and then mole cricket effect. Uh, Camel is going to mill two instead. So, Mills, Camilla, Destruction. Okay, I was going to say, please don't mill Camilla, Camilla again. And then go ahead, Summon. Alright. So, they mill Destruction. That's a good mill. They bring out Camilla from the deck. Sure. <clears throat> That's fine. They're probably going to try to set up Nat Beast. It's a really good versus Kashtira. A lot of their deck is actually spells. Go Kamala, Hugin, Summon, make Coral Dragon. Then we're going to go Fountain over Fountain, activate another Runic spell, but it's a special summon. So then we have Floor set up, and then we have Kamala, Mole Cricket, and the Nat Beast. Mole Cricket summon itself back. Uh, then we can go Fountain 1 for 2, Fangs 2, Target Fountain. Shout out to Camilla for milling a Runic spell. Giving us a free draw. So, put back draw. Come on, come on, come on. Runic tip. Super Grave Ancient Organism. I want Polly to win all together, but I don't want it to be easy. I don't want it to be an easy 2 0. Uh, gotta, gotta work for it. And then Synchro off. His, the last YCS he won was down to the wire. Go for Fleur. Coral Dragon draw. Okay. Yeah, committing a decent amount to the field. But the thing is, like, even though they're committing a lot to the field, like, monster-wise, um, it's actually just not that much. Like, it really isn't that. And that's not that much. Oh, they're going to activate Fountain over Fountain. Okay. They're going to keep going. They're going to activate Freezing to special. Okay, so we're going to draw one. Summon out Fangs. Fountain, Fangs. Mate. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to add back Fountain, put back, draw one. Our play is still just Nat Beast, right? Like, I guess Fangs is fine. We're trying to draw into, like, a Floodgate or something, but we did use Freezing, so I'm guessing that means we have another Freezing. Someone in chat said, Found and Tipper Green limited in one month. Don't worry, chat. Like, Found the One's fine. Found the One would be okay. Honestly, Tip the One would hurt just because Tip's the most free one. Mole Cricket effects summon itself. Yup. Aha, playing in the dark early. You don't even know it. And then, pass turn. Draw Cosmic. Oh, dang it. I was going to say, imagine Dark Ruler. Okay. Cosmic on Fountain. Game. I win. Thank you. You can go home now. Oh, they have Nib in hand. They have a bunch of Runic spells plus Nib. Activate Dark Ruler. Go ahead, try to shut down the field. Yeah. I mean, they could technically chain like a Runic spell and then chain more Cricket, but that's not good. Um. Okay, they're going to activate Pot of Prosperity. Prosperity, go banish six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they could chain Nat Beast to mill two to try to get runic spells in the graveyard. It's negated, but it can still mill. Okay, they'll let that go. They don't want to play in the talents or anything. Um, Fenrir times two. They already have Fenrir. Ash times two. It's not necessary. Imperm, not necessary. So it's Dios. So it's probably... Probably. But could grab Ash? Wait. I guess it depends what their draw for turn was. Oh, wait. We know it was Rise Heart? Because, like, Ash is decent to try to get Fleur out. Okay, but they're going to grab Theosis there. And then put the rest of the cards to the bottom of the deck. Alright. Yeah, good thing they didn't Nat Beast. Otherwise, they really would have played in the Talons pretty hard. Even though milling two, it is pretty, uh, you know, you kind of want to do it there. It's kind of nice getting the runic spells in the grave. So, they're going to go Fenrir, summon it. Fenrir effect, go search. And then, 
They have flashing fire in hand, freezing curses. So they have a few interruptions. Oh, they want to read Theosis. Um, okay. Yes, if you flashing fire the Fenrir, the Theosis will not resolve. It needs to compare to an attribute to special. So they're going to freezing the Fenrir. Negate it, make them banish three. Hit Gamma, Ash, Imperm. Like, can't they hit like a birth there? Like, why not? Then they can Theosa, Scarecrow, Kashira, Kabanish, add back birth, you know, something like that. And then, let's see, from here. They're going to activate Theosis, target Fenrir, then chain flashing fire to pop it. Okay, pop, banish two. Come on. Banish something good for Polly. Birth! Let's go! The one time for the one time. Let's go, baby! Fountain put back two to draw two. And then. Okay, okay. The town still isn't live. It's just not going to be live unless they get hand trapped. So now, summon out Scarecall Kashtiro by banishing Theosis. And then they can summon Rise Heart. Rise Heart go banish. Oh, Theosis add back birth. You know, Rise Heart could go. Banish, and that can give us something to summon back off of birth, but we don't need anything like that. We don't need unicorn. So, activate birth. The problem is, is how many cards Jesse Flores has in hand right now. The board is very easy to deal with. We could deal with it right now if we wanted to. It's really just, um... Oh? They're gonna go Mole Cricket Effect Tribute itself. Sure. I don't know why. <laughs> because now, if they summon it from Extra Deck, you can summon out Mole Cricket. But then. And then what? Like. <laughs> it, you have Mole Cricket on field like you just did. So now Talents is alive when you were playing around it. Otherwise, you could have Nat Beasted cards. Why didn't you Nat Beast Birth if your plan was to activate Mole Cricket? And then you could have milled two and tried to hit Runic cards. So now Talents is alive. They're going to activate Triple Tactics Talents. Probably look at hand. Taking a monster doesn't seem very good. It's, like, decent. Um, the problem is, is, like, the floor is negated, so you can't take floor and, like, pop itself or anything. So, show the hand. Okay. We have Flashing Fire, Nib, Runic Fountain, D-Barrier, Super Ancient Organisms. Super Ancient Organisms is a floodgate. That's fine. D-Barrier is a floodgate. That's fine. They won't come up until our next turn. Nib kind of hurts because we can't go a rise heart if they have nib. We just won't be able to make it because we're already on three summons. Yeah, they're going to hit nib. I was going to say, like, I understand if they want to hit flashing fire, but then they're just making a way weaker end board. But they're going to get hit with flashing fire on a rise, but then they can arise banish fountain. And then, like, it's like the flashing fire really doesn't do anything. So, summon out Kashira Rise Heart. And then, I guess they could go Shangri La, banish Big Bang, Big Bang Detach Summon. Yeah, that seems pretty good. They could also just battle phase out the whole field right now. Besides fangs. Actually, you could banish that face down. Nah, it's not worth it. Because then you can't out floor. So, overlay. 
Summon out Shangri-La. Then we're going to go Rise Heart Effect to go Banish. Banish Big Bang. Make the opponent banish three face down from Rise Heart. And then Shangri-La, Big Bang. We're going to lock a Monster Zone. Uh, detach, Special. Please make him banish three. Yeah, banish three. They're letting him know. It's just free. It's literally just free to make him banish. And then summon a Rise Heart over Shangri-La. Yep, okay. So get rid of the Blox Zone. That's fine. They're thinking about going Big Eye. Big Eye's not even good, though. It's, like, decent. Oh, wait. Nah. Big Eye to take Nat Beast sounds crazy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Nat... Big Eye take Nat Beast sounds crazy. You don't Big Eye take Fleur, because if you go Big Eye target Fleur, they change Fleur effect. And then it's used its only effect. No, I feel like Big Eye Take Nat Beast was the move. It just beats like everything. They're gonna banish Fountain Face Down. I guess they just beat everything anyways. Beat over, then they get to attach. Attach Garua. Um, okay, yeah, it's banished. And then effect to attach. Attach the Skull Warrior that can banish itself from the graveyard to pop one monster on the field. It's not a quick effect. Oh no, Polly's gonna go Big Eye Target Fleur. It should have been Big Eye Target Nat Beast, but they don't know. I mean, what are the odds that the opponent knows? They could mess up too. One mistake, two mistakes, three mistakes. <laughs> Summon, effect, target Fleur. They said yes! Oh my god, they better have used the negate already. Because if you activate the effect to negate there, even though it's negated, it's still only been used once, so then they can't use the effect in the future. A rise heart effect, uh, banish the fangs. And then they can get a rise heart effect to attach. And then that attaches the Fenrir to the rise heart. Are they thinking if it's okay? They're actually gonna attach the skull. Because if the opponent goes like Flash and Fire, Target, Arise Heart, then we'd at least fill our graveyard up with good cards. And we get the draw one. And we can banish the Flash and Fire face down. Holy. This is crazy. And they messed up with not using Fleur Negate. Otherwise, they literally could just go activate. Pop a Rise Heart. And that's the only interruption. So then they could top deck out of this. But now it's like impossible to top deck out of this. So all I was saying taking the Nav Beast was crazy. You just leave Fallon on field because it doesn't matter if they have Fallon if you have Nav Beast. It doesn't do anything. And then you have a Rise Heart. A bunch of materials. Yes, 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 yes. Polly's about to win. Polly's about to win. Polly's about to win. G, G's, G, G's. We won. You didn't. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Yeah, they're thinking hard here. They really don't want to make a mistake right now. Activate Runic Fountain. Response. Possibly? Probably not. No. No response. No response needed. That's fine. Flashing fire. So they know D barrier, super ancient organism in hand, and then there's one blank. I didn't see what they targeted with that, but they're going to floor negate it. Okay. And then a rise heart effect to attach. Attach Fenrir. That's good for the Big Bang underneath of the Arise Heart. Oh. I'm thinking about attaching something else. Attaching Theosis one isn't bad. Do they want follow-up in hand or do they want follow-up on field? 
Okay, yeah, attach Fenrir. Sure. That's game. That's game. Set three. Pass. End phase, Arise Heart, Banish. To be honest, I don't even think you hit a set card. I think you just hit Fountain. Nah, Fountain's fine. Yeah, it doesn't even do anything. They don't have any spells in Grave and they're still under Arise Heart. So, Banish 3. Banish the middle one. Okay. And then, Arise Heart effect and Big Bang effect. Um... I guess the one bad thing about going for the Fenrir instead of Theosis is now they have one material under a Rise Heart instead of two. They have Fluor Effect to try to pop. They're gonna flip the Super Ancient Organism. Now. Oh, they don't have it. They probably banished it with the Rise Heart. Otherwise, you'd activate it there. To shut the opponent off from using Fluor Effect to pop or Fenrir Effect to search. Uh, but it wouldn't matter anyways. Activate Fenrir Effect. Go search, that's fine. Someone in chat said, wait, if Polly hit the Sacred Tree, he threw. How? It's not a throw. Because what does Super Ancient Organism do when you have full setup? You can Draco Sack, Tribute Itself, Pop. You can Arise Heart Banish it. They have D Barrier. It's like they could D Barrier Super Ancient Organism you, and you still just poke them for like all their life points. Grab Arise Heart. And then afterwards, we're going to activate Rise Heart to Summon. Yup. And then Rise Heart Effect, go Banish. So, banish Theosis, make him banish three face down, and then Arise Heart 1, Theosis 2, add back, add back the Scareclaw, catch Tira, and attach. GG's. Polly is the YCS champion. LA 2023, the 250th YCS. This is Polly's second YCS win. He won a YCS about a year ago. Um, you know, some people may have been like, Oh, it's a remote... I know how people are about remote duels. They're like, oh, it's a remote duel win. It doesn't count. Blah, blah, blah. Well, Pauly came and won the 250th YCS. So, that's crazy. Um, Alright, that's going to be it for the video. Um, shout out to Pauly for winning such group chat. It's crazy. And uh, well played. I do think that the Nachiria Runic player misplayed. But to be fair, it's like late, and they've been playing all day, and that deck takes a lot of brain power. So playing that deck for 13 hours, or 14 hours now, after playing for 14 hours yesterday, and probably getting little sleep, time zone change, it's going to mess you up pretty bad. Um, but alright, that's going to be it for the YCS. Make sure to go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. And the DB Grinder, signing off. Peace. Have a nice day. Stay safe.